Dr. Parrish. Um, you were you are head of the emergency department here. So unfold the story for us. What happened? I am the medical director. Thank you, Doctor. Last name. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, I am the medical director of the emergency department here at ORMC. And I, uh, oh, sorry, Gary Parrish. And uh, again, I am the medical director of the emergency department here at ORMC. Um, if you don't know, our emergency department here is a very busy, um, active, 75 bed. Um, academic center where we train emergency medicine residents as we train trauma and other residents. Um, I did happen to be working clinically in the emergency department uh, Saturday night, overnight, Sunday morning. I was uh, scheduled actually to leave at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, around 2 o'clock or so, uh, we got word that there were some shootings. Now, we have a very busy trauma service, so getting shootings is not anything terribly unusual. Uh, but we didn't know quite what was about to hit us. So about 2 o'clock or so, we uh, got notice of the, uh, the uh, uh, patients coming in and brought those in. Um, we work in teams in the emergency department. Um, Dr. Bondani was the other attending physician who was working with me in the emergency department that night who was actually stationed in the trauma bay. Um, of course, due to the extent of the injuries here, um, we all... Uh, uh, took care of these patients, but uh, I want Dr. Bondani to describe a little bit because she was there actually uh, before I got there uh, initially. Uh, Catherine Bondani, uh, K-T-H-R-Y-N, B-O-N-D-A-N-I. So, like Gary said, we got essentially a call saying that we had some gunshot wounds coming in. Um, we didn't know exactly how many we were going to get. Um, Dr. Stone and I, the senior resident on, went to the trauma bay to get ready for the patients to start coming in. And our first patient was relatively stable, awake and talking to us. And we thought maybe they're all gonna be like this and that would be great. And then we quickly got two or three more that were very critical in nature. Um, Several of our other senior residents came into the trauma bay as well as Dr. Parrish um, to start helping us triage the patients. The trauma team, Dr. Smith and his awesome residents came in and started helping us kind of figure out who was sick, who was the sickest and what we needed to do. We quickly got about five patients and that was a lot for us and we thought maybe that was gonna be it and then they started lining up in the hallway they weren't being brought in by ambulances. There was no paramedics coming in and giving us report and dropping them off. They were being dropped off in truckloads and in ambulance loads where our amazing nurses and techs were putting them on stretchers and rolling them into us and telling us that another patient's here, another patient's here, another patient's here. And quickly our trauma bay became full to capacity and we had to move people out. So Dr. Smith and Dr. Parrish and I started using the residents and quickly figuring out who was the sickest and who could move out of the trauma bay to make room for somebody else so that we could triage and treat everybody. And in a matter of 30 minutes, I think we had multiple surgeons coming in the door to help us out. I saw dozens of nurses who I knew were not on that night who showed up. I saw texts coming from everywhere. We had x-ray in there, we had blood in there, we had everybody in there trying to figure out who was sick and, and who wasn't. And we just started one by one moving through and, and trying to figure out who needed to go where and just going one by one and figuring them out. And I think that Dr. Smith was really the kind of team leader who helped us kind of triage and move from patient to patient. Let me just uh, make a couple of comments. We in our area, as in many metropolitan areas, have a, a very advanced EMS system. And fortunately, they give us advance notice for patients that are coming in. So that helps greatly in preparing our, our personnel and our resources. The difficulty in this case was that there was really no advance notice at all. 
because of the proximity. Now that was great for the patients, them being close, but it made it very difficult for the medical staff and the nursing staff to take care of these patients because they essentially were showing up without any uh, notification at all and we really didn't know what their injuries were until they were brought into the trauma bay. We have a fantastic trauma service. We have a very collaborative and wonderful relationship with our trauma surgeons. Uh, the trauma surgeons that were here uh, uh, called in backup quickly and they arrived unbelievably fast. So that was really uh, fantastic uh, as, as an emergency physician. Talk about the trauma team. Sure. So, my name is Chad. This Or this one right here. Yeah. Um, can you hear me? My name is Chadwick Smith. Um, I'm the um, surgical ICU director here at Orlando Health, and I was the attending trauma surgeon on call that night. Um, I got a call from the emergency department resident. Um, uh, she called me on my cell phone and. Uh, that's kind of unusual and said that there's multiple gunshot wounds coming and I, I went down to the trauma bay and just as uh, Kate said, um, the patients just started coming. One came, then another came, then another came. And um, the first patient, as she said, was, was, was uh, shot and needed to go to the operating room but um, had stable vital signs. The next, pa next patient um, was not as lucky and I quickly realized that I needed to call back up. I called uh, Dr. Ibrahim was the backup trauma surgeon that night. I called him uh, and then more patients continued to come. I called Dr. Cheatham uh, and then uh, as once they got there um, the flow did not stop and so I began to call um, my other partners Dr. Haveron. Dr. Levy actually um, called me and um, he was on call for pediatric surgery at Arnold Palmer Hospital and uh, offered to help. I said, please come, please come, we need your help. Uh, I then got a hold of, of Dr. Luby uh, and then started calling the residents. Um, uh, you know, you can imagine calling someone at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning uh, when you get a phone call from work. You know, some people don't have their phones on, some people have them, you know, in, in the kitchen. Um, uh, but I think almost every person that I called answered the phone. Um, I said, this is not a drill. This is not a joke. We have 20 to uh, plus gunshot wounds coming in. Uh, I need you here as fast as I can. And, and every time the answer that I got was, I'll be right there. Um, after that, after making those phone calls, again, quickly they arrived to the emergency department and I was on the phone with the operating room, Dr. Mukherjee. Uh, quickly flexed up. We usually run about two ORs at night, if we, uh, but we got in personnel, nurses, uh, CRNAs, staff from all over the uh, organization uh, quickly to get these patients in the operating room. Um, I want to say that uh, looking out here today, as crowded as this is, um, this is about the level of crowdedness that it felt in the emergency department that night. Uh, add in um, people in pain, people worrying about their loved ones, people not knowing where their loved ones are, and we're trying to help them all. Um, quickly, we got a couple patients up to the operating room. Um, again, our first patient, um, he needed to go to the operating room, but he was stable. Um, there were Quickly thereafter, probably four to five patients that came in that we were unable to save. And then there were several that came in and that needed operation uh, almost immediately, and they got taken up. Uh, and uh, I believe Dr. Luby stayed up in the operating room, Dr. Havern was up in the operating room, and they would just operate. And, say, and as soon as their room was done, they would move the patient to the intensive care unit and send me another one. And I would walk around the emergency department and try to determine just by looking at their vital signs, their wound pattern and how awake they were, where they needed to go. And I tried to keep everybody that needed to go to the operating room in the trauma bay. If someone was brought in from the emergency, from the street um, into the trauma bay, they were quickly assessed. If they did not have immediate life-threatening injuries, they were moved elsewhere in the emergency department and cared for by our colleagues in critical care medicine. We had 
EMTs that would drop a patient off that would start putting in lines in other patients. We had, um, you know, environmental services would, would have uh, the, bay, the bay where patients would go clean in about 30 to 45 seconds um, with sharp objects, with bloody towels, with, with all kinds of stuff done. Everybody was done it safely. Um, I, I just cannot say enough about how uh, much we increased to the to increased our resources to the level of need you know within a very short period of time um, after we got that initial wave about probably 20 to 22 patients um, stabilized or sent to the operating room we had kind of if you would call it a lull uh, while the shooter was barricaded inside um, at this point um, we had used basically every thing in the emergency department and our um, suppliers got stuff from Central Supply, brought stuff over from Arnold Palmer Hospital, from Winnie Palmer Hospital, such that we didn't need for anything. We had used it all, but we had it replaced basically immediately. Um, uh, then we got word from OPD that there would be another 20 to 25 patients uh, continuing to come. And that's when the second wave started to come, and it was basically a repeat of the first. We had gotten some of those patients out of the operating room to the intensive care unit, and we just kind of started doing it all over again, putting the patients that needed to go to the operating room in the trauma bay uh, or moving people that did not out to the other parts of the emergency department. And I just can't thank my, my partners, my colleagues, uh, my colleagues in nursing, respiratory therapy, um, environmental services, the uh, support staff um, did a great job. I think it is very fortunate that this happened two blocks away, um, and it's very fortunate that we have the team to pull together like we do. Dr. How does that Hold on. Hold on. Rand, do you want to talk about what kind of injuries you guys saw that night? Uh, I'm Joseph Ibrahim. I'm the trauma medical director here at Orlando Health. Um, so upon entering the trauma bay, as Dr. Smith described, uh, it was somewhat of a, what you would think of a war scene. The trauma bay was very full. We had patients in every corner. Um, we saw the full gamut of wounds from wounds to the extremities, uh, wounds to the chest, wounds to the abdomen and, and pelvis area. Um, as if they were shot from below, which is what has been described to me by some of the uh, EMS people. Um, it varied in, in, in the size of the wounds from small caliber wounds to a very large caliber wound, uh, which the larger ones left a significant amount of tissue destruction, which is something that we're not as used to seeing, uh, something more from like a, a rifle or something you would expect with that. And as you would expect, with the large soft tissue wounds, you also had large wounds inside cavities, whether it be the chest or the abdomen. Um, so we had, again, the full gamut. Uh, but again, we had the full team come together. Uh, we had all kinds of nursing, uh, respiratory therapists, everybody come together. The orthopedic surgery uh, team was even very, very helpful. And even in the emergency department, I had orthopedic residents come with me to help triage patients, removing tourniquets, things like that. Uh, so again, we mentioned you know, ED, this general surgery, but the ortho team was also instrumental in that as well. Um, uh, then they would take the patients that were maybe not as emergent after we had taken care of the critical ones and uh, take care of the orthopedic injuries, uh, as you heard uh, Mr. Colon talk about with his. Um, so again, the full gamut um, of injuries.